What's going on everybody, it's Joe here with Deranged. So if you clicked on the video, more than likely you are looking to sell your UTV. Sad times, but hey, they come. I just finished the process myself. The purpose of this video is to help you understand what it takes to get your UTV sold. Whether you're selling to a cash buyer or a financed buyer, we'll answer some of the questions like where you should meet, uh, what you should list your side-by-side -side for, how you can prepare for it. So. Um, Hopefully this video will answer your questions. If we miss some, leave them in the comments down below and we'll have a conversation there about what we missed. Uh, feel free to share your tips and tricks as well with uh, those who are watching in the comments down below. So quick note on this video, guys. Uh, I'm just gonna run some B-roll and talk over the top of it. I know uh, a lot of you out there would just love to look at my face the whole time and talk about this. Really, there's not a ton of, of interesting pictures or information or videos or whatever to show that are specifically re related to selling UTV. I guess I could take pictures of me going to the bank or uh, my side-by-side -side wheeling off in the distance with the, uh, the new owner, but that's not really helpful for the conversation. So enjoy the B-roll as we run through the process of selling a UTV. Last thing, don't forget to subscribe. So for those of you who have subscribed already, we really appreciate it. It uh, obviously has helped us grow our channel to where it is, and uh, we certainly appreciate it. If you haven't already, don't forget to. Uh, also, you can support the channel by clicking on the links down below. We have affiliate links to Rocky Mountain ATV down below. So if you need anything for your side-by-side, -side, your motorcycle, uh, anything else, you can find links in the description down below. Uh, buying uh, from Rocky Mountain gets you great service and gets you a quick turnaround on your products also gives us a little spiff uh, for uh, pitching the products for them. Uh, it doesn't cost you any more, just helps out the channel. Uh, so if you use our links down below, we certainly appreciate it. Okay, to get started, if you're selling your UTV, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is determine the value of your side-by-side. -side. What is it worth? Not how much do you have finance, not what does Peter down the road think that you should list it for, but what is it worth? What kind of value is, is it bringing? So in the past, there is usually a really reliable way for you to do that. You just look up the blue book value in either the NADA or the uh, Kelly blue book, and you can see exactly what your side by side is uh, worth based on blue book. But we're in a different market. And honestly, with as many modifications as we do to side by sides anyway, uh, really the way to determine how much your side-by-side -side is worth is a little different than just looking it up in a book. Determining the value of your UTV is actually pretty simple. It's basically just taking a look at what other people are paying for the same thing that you have, and that'll give you what your value is. What is your UTV going for in the market around you? I found something pretty interesting when I was selling my Honda Talon recently. The value of my Honda Talon was different in Arizona than it was in Utah, than it was in New Mexico, than it was across the United States in Nashville or anywhere else. The way to determine your value is basically to look up machines that are identical or as close to identical as possible to yours and uh, seeing what they're listed for, seeing what other people are buying or selling them for. That will give you a good start on what your value is. Things to take into consideration when you're determining your value. Number one, accessories are awesome and we often spend a ton of money in them. We've got a ton of money into our Pro XP, we've got some money into our KRX, we've got money into our machines and as we add these parts, we hope that it improves the value or increases the value of the machine. But the fact is, adding parts to a machine, especially if they're bolt-on, especially if they're Chinese parts, adds really limited value. Uh, I would say your best case scenario is 25 to 50% of the the money you put into the parts, you'll be able to get back. So if you put $2,000 in wheels and tires on your UTV, you can expect to get $500 maybe in increased value for your side-by-side. -side. Same goes for the rest of the accessories along the way. Again, keeping in mind the higher quality of the accessories, the more you'll get, but also that you're not gonna get 100% of what you put into it. Another thing to consider when you're determining your value is how many miles do you have on your rig? Uh, compare that to the rigs in your local area and, and adjust your value based on that. Uh, how well was it maintained? Were there any major mechanical issues? Did you have the motor swapped out? Uh, has there been any major clutching issues? Things like that. Has it been wrecked? Has it been rolled? Those are things you'll want to take into consideration when, you, when you're determining your value. Ultimately, the easiest answer, the best way to say it, is your side-by-side -side is worth what people in your nearest market or in the market around you are willing to pay. If that is above market value and you want to get $50,000 for your souped up KRX 
and uh, somebody's willing to pay for it, then guess what? That's what the value of it is. The fact of the matter is we can't rely right now on NADA or uh, Kelly Blue Book just because the values fluctuate so much uh, by market, by accessories, by availability of machines, by uh, demand for used machines. So uh, the easiest way, again, is just to uh, find machines as similar to yours, selling it as close to a market as you as possible, and start with your value in that area. So the next thing you need to do is determine where you're going to list your machine. So there are a lot of different places to list UTVs nowadays. There are ATV or UTV exclusive websites. Uh, you can list on Facebook Marketplace. You can list on OfferUp. You can list on Craigslist. Uh, many of the classified sites that we have around the country offer the same thing. So I know in Utah, there's a very popular classified site called KSL uh, Classifieds, something along those lines. They probably have those in other markets as well. Uh, I would search each one of those markets first and kind of figure out which one has the most UTVs listed on it and then uh, start with listing there. When I listed my Talon, I listed it on uh, Facebook Marketplace, OfferUp, and Craigslist. Ultimately, I ended up selling it or finding the buyer via Facebook Marketplace. In the end, there are dozens of sites that you could choose from. Ideally, you wanna to go to where they are listed the most. Uh, so for me in Arizona, that was Facebook Marketplace, OfferUp, and Craigslist. Uh, for David in uh, Utah with his uh, Maverick uh, Sport that he just sold, uh, that is KSL Classified. So what you wanna do is find the one that's most popular in your area and lean into that. Also, if there are other places you can list it for free, list it wherever you can for free. OfferUp's free, Facebook Marketplace is for free, Craigslist is free. List it in those places where it's free first, and then if you need to branch out from there, then branch out from there. Next, a couple tips for your listing. So what you'll wanna remember with your listing is number one, give plenty of detail. I think it's hilarious when somebody lists their UTV and they say, I have a 2020 Pro XP, I wanna get $50,000 out of it, has 2,200 miles on it. And that's all they say about it. The thing's got new wheels and tires, the thing's got a cage, it's got a particle separator, it's got a huge stereo system in it, it's got all these things and they just list that, hey, it's a uh, uh, Pro XP and I want 35 for it. So make sure when you're putting your listing together that you're as detailed as possible. List all the accessories that you have in the listing for it. If you'd like to, list all the value or all the prices for the accessories that you put on as well. Again, keeping in mind that you're not gonna get every penny back for those accessories that you put on it. Another thing is take good pictures. Don't take a picture of your UTV all dirty, dusty, muddy, whatever else. Make sure it's cleaned up, shined up, looks good, and take some good pictures of your UTV. You have to remember that your first method of getting people's attention is the pictures that you put on your listing. So you wanna put a picture up that makes your side-by-side -side look as good as possible. It's gotta be clean, wheels and tires gotta be shined up, looking good. Uh, you don't want dirt and mud all over the place. You want it to look as good as possible when you list it. Uh, I think if you've looked around in the used UTV market, you've probably recognized, I know I have, that people don't do a good enough job of making their machines look good when they're posting pictures of them. If you wanna sell it, if you wanna sell it quicker, uh, the better pictures you have and the better the machine looks, the better. Also, if you have maintenance records or a warranty or anything else that brings value to your side-by-side, -side, make sure you list that in your UTV listing as well. Okay, now you've got your UTV listed. It's on Facebook Marketplace, it's on OfferUp, wherever it is, you've got it listed, and now you're starting to get people reaching out to you asking about your machine. So first and foremost, keep in mind there are scammers out there from all over the country, all over the world, that will instantly respond or quickly respond anyway and say, I'd like to buy your side-by-side -side for a full price offer immediately. That's the thing they'll say, and then they won't give a ton of details. Ask questions. Ask questions that only somebody interested in buying a UTV would answer. Also, if you're working on Facebook Marketplace or other places that have profiles, look into their profile before you respond to an answer. On my talent, I had a guy offer me cash right up front, said I'd like to come get it tomorrow. And then... Um, I said, sure, let's, uh, let's take a look. Uh, you know, when works for you? Uh, what time are you thinking? All that kind of stuff. Uh, he said, tomorrow at 3 p.m. works great. Uh, before I come out, can you click on this link and uh, fill out this documentation information so I can look up the VIN, make sure it hasn't been any accidents or anything else? Big red flag. Instantly reported the dude and blocked the dude. If somebody's asking for the VIN ahead of time, not in person, 
then it's a red flag and I would probably uh, walk away from that type of a buyer. So keep your eye out for scammers, they are out there. Now, as far as the buyers that reach out, does it really matter if it's a cash buyer or if it's a, a financed buyer? Not really. The money spends the same way. If the person has secured financing or if they have cash, both of them are gonna go into your bank account the same way. Both of them are gonna pay off your uh, loan on your side-by-side -side if you have one the same way. It doesn't really matter. We no longer live in a world where cash is king, right? It, where, where cash brings some additional value. Uh, I think it's uh, funny when people continue to uh, reach out and say, what if I give you cash? Or I know you're asking 30, but I've got 25 cash. Who gives a crap? Cash, check, whatever. It's all going to go into my account. It's all going to pay off my side-by-side -side in the same way. I'll say that with a caveat, and that is avoid personal checks. You don't want to take a personal check for a twenty or thirty or fifty thousand dollars side by side. Get a bank check, get a cashier's check straight from the bank that goes right into yours. That's the way that you want to go. Don't be taking a check, a personal check for uh, your twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollar asset. That kind of brings me to where to meet. So where should you meet when you're selling your UTV? I tell this to everyone that's selling one. It doesn't matter if somebody's paying cash, you own it free and clear, anything else, go to your bank. Meet them at your bank. Uh, the reason why is banks have loan officers there or bankers there that are notaries that can help you get a notarized bill of sale. That they can help you through the process. If it is financed through that bank, that would be ideal. Uh, you meet at the bank where the machine is financed. The person buying the machine cuts a check or, or brings cash anyway or brings a cashier's check for the payoff amount. The bank pays off the loan to the side-by-side -side and puts the rest of the money in your savings account or checking account or whatever it is. So meet at a bank every time regardless. If your machine is financed, ideally you're meeting at your bank. If they are securing financing, what you'll have to do beforehand is get your payoff from your bank so that they can come to the transaction prepared with the payoff from your bank. So if you're selling a financed UTV, there is a little bit of legwork ahead of time that you need to make sure you're aware of. Know the value or know the payoff, get that from your bank, provide it to the buyer so that they have it so that they can secure financing and then um, meet them at your bank to get the transaction done, get a notarized bill of, bill of sale that you, can, uh, that you can walk away with. Speaking of walking away, so you sold your UTV, uh, you have met them at a bank and you had a notary uh, notarize a bill of sale, what you should you be walking away with? If your UTV was financed, like I said, you'll want to meet at your bank and you'll want to walk away with a notarized bill of sale that says, I sold this machine to this person for this amount, here's the VIN number. Um, you'll want to walk away with that for your records to make sure uh, you have that and make sure the transaction was witnessed by a notary. If your UTV was owned free and clear, the only thing that changes is you're probably gonna be walking away with some cash or a check or a bunch of money in your bank account. That's really the only thing that changes. Either way, you're gonna to wanna to walk away with a notarized bill of sale between the two parties. The next thing that you wanna do, and I forgot to do this actually for a few weeks after I sold mine, is you'll wanna cancel your insurance for your side-by-side. -side. You're no longer needing the insurance. Hopefully you have it. If you don't, get your side-by-side -side insured. I know some people don't want to, some do. Just get it insured. It covers you for medical and, and other incidents around a side-by-side, -side, so just get it insured. Uh, but you'll want to cancel your insurance after you're done with the transaction. Now, after you've canceled your insurance, what is the next step? Well, we all know. The next step is to start the process of searching for your new side-by-side. -side. Whether you're moving into a sportier model, a newer model, an older model, a rancher model, whatever it is, the next step in the process of selling your UTV is to start the process of buying a new one. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Hopefully this video brought you a little bit of value and helped you understand a little bit about the sales process of selling or basically buying a used a UTV. If you have experiences that you wanna share, share them with the group down below. Uh, share your thoughts in the comments down below. I'm sure uh, we'd love to hear them and it would be helpful for those who are uh, looking for the same information. All right, guys. Well, I'm sitting here waiting for my machine to arrive. Hopefully it gets here soon. No telling what it is. In the meantime, ride safe, pack out what you pack in, and we'll see you on the next one.
just a man, flesh and blood. All I need is real love.